Hello there. Recently I was stimulated by an article that I read at worldofwebcraft.com. It was written by a friend of mine named James. Within his article he's discussing how he's noticing a lot of similarities between various programming languages that he's messing around with. So what I'm going to do now is write an article stemming off of James's article and I just wanted to throw out three code examples that show how very similar JavaScript, ActionScript, and PHP are. Okay, get yourself a blank HTML file ready and follow along with me, my friend. Okay, all right. Within your JavaScript element, you're going to type in compute. And we want to feed that function three arguments or three parameters. Two numeric values and one string value. So what I'll do is give it a two, comma, a seven, comma, and a string value of a username. I'll just put my name there. You put your name in yours. Ha, ha, ha. Now let's just double clicky that right there. Press control C to copy it. I'm going to type in function and then paste in function name, compute. Open close parentheses, open the curly brace, and go down a couple of lines and put in your closing curly brace there so you have your function nest all set up. Now this is intaking three parameters. So we're going to make three variables out of those parameters. We're going to say value one, which is a numeric value, is going to be A. The next one we'll name B for the next numeric value. And for the username that's coming in, we're going to name U. So we have variables A, B, and U, which represent these three here. So when this function compute runs, it passes those three variables through. So when the function processes, it has access to those three variables using the names a, b, and u. Now in the first line within the function we're going to type in bar c. So we're creating a new variable called c and it's going to represent a number which is the sum of a plus b. And we put semicolons to break a statement. So that's why semicolons are used in all of the scripting languages that we're going to be demonstrating within this video. Now to output the results to the program we're going to type in document.write and in between parentheses, we're going to put in a set of double quotes. And outside the parentheses, we'll put in our semicolon. OK, so you can just type in the following string in between your double quotes. What I did was I just typed the string the way I want it to output. But you can see I need to put the variables here in place of my xxx. So in order to do that, let's just put in a double quote where the three x's were, plus sign, another plus sign, and another double quote. And in between those two plus signs, we're going to put the u variable. That way it says, OK, Adam. Then we want the sum of a and b is equal to, we want the c variable here. So let's just remove those three x's and put it plus c. And there you go. And there's many ways you can make output to the program. So now let's take this since it's done. Make sure our file is saved and run it in the browser. Press F12. It says, OK, Adam, the sum of a and b is equal to 5. Now if I change this number to a 7 and this to Joe, Run that in the browser. OK, Joe, the sum of a and b is equal to 10. All right, so you can see how a basic function that intakes parameters dynamically works, OK? So that's JavaScript. Now, let's take that exact same code and let's put it into ActionScript. OK, here I am in Flash Professional Authoring CS5. I'm going to go up to my timeline and open my scripting panel on that keyframe by pressing F9. Once my scripting panel is open, I'm going to pop in that JavaScript that I just copied from my HTML file. Now all I have to do is change one little thing. JavaScript and ActionScript 3 are so similar. So you can see I changed document right to say trace. Everything else stays exactly the same. So those are very similar programming technologies. So all we have to do to see the output of this program, since we're using trace in debugging mode, is press Control enter and You can see we have, OK, Joe, the sum of A and B is equal to 10. So that's the output. Let's go back to the timeline, and you can see the code. I just changed one little tiny thing, which was the way we're outputting to the program. All right, so that's JavaScript and ActionScript. So let's just take that ActionScript. Let's go into PHP now. Here we have an empty PHP document all ready to go with our PHP opening and closing tags in place. Let's pop in that code, and it says we have a syntax error, which is natural. In our variables, we have to have dollar signs in PHP. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to add dollar signs to all these variable names here. And instead of plus signs, I want dots. So I'm going to get my dollar signs in front of all my variables, and these plus signs, turn them to dots, because that's how you append to a string 
instead of using a plus sign like ActionScript and JavaScript, you use a dot in PHP to append a variable within a string there. And you can't trace. What you have to do is echo. And you don't actually need the parentheses around your echo value. Now you see where we have var? We don't need to signify var. C is just a variable created at that point and you don't put var in front of it. Okay, here is the output of our PHP program. And you have to make sure that you have PHP enabled on your local machine or that you're running this online on your live web server where PHP runs natively. Basically, just you have to be in an environment where PHP processes in order to see the output of the program. Okay, so that was a universal programming case study for JavaScript, PHP, and ActionScript 3 that shows how strikingly similar all three of these programming languages are. Okay, I won't take up any more of your time. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I'll talk to you guys next time.